Hey guys, here today with my March read. Before we get into the books that I read in March, uh, those of you who haven't been on my channel uh, for a little while or maybe you're new here, I have started doing monthly giveaways with my reads videos this year. I'm giving away the book that I was most excited about that I read in that month. Last month's book that I'm giving away is When We Were Alive by Chelsea Fisher and the winner of that book is Butterfly Elephant Books. I should have already sent you a direct message on YouTube uh, when you're watching this so reply to that and make sure to send me your postal address so I can get that out to you. Stick around to the end and I will let you know how to enter the giveaway and what this month's book is. Uh, but onwards to the books that I read in March. Let's kick things off with the books I read for Mysteries in March, which was my little mystery reading challenge I did in the last week of March. I managed to get through five titles, uh, one of which was an audiobook, so we'll talk about that one first. But I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated. It was really fun seeing what mystery reads you guys are reading. I added a bunch of stuff to my wish list, so thank you. The audiobook that I listened to is Lord Mullion's Secret by Michael Innes. And the version that I listened to was narrated by Hugh Laurie, which was very much my reason for uh, listening to it because I've discovered that Hugh Laurie is just one of my favourite narrators of audiobooks. I just think he has such a wonderful reading voice and he does all of the little voices of the characters and he's just hysterically funny and he just brings so much to an audiobook, especially a comedy audiobook, which this was very, very funny. So this book is about an artist, Charles Honeybath, who has been requested to paint a portrait of an old school friend's wife. Uh, so he visits Mullion Castle, which is where his school friend and family lives. And it's very sort of Woodhousian um, humour, sort of lots of misunderstandings, but in that very classic British humour way, case of mistaken identity, that type of thing. There's even a crazy old aunt, which if you've read Woodhouse, that is very Woodhouse. It was all just really fun and funny and Hugh Laurie's narration was just wonderful. And the mystery portion of the story has something to do with artwork and heritage and the gardener Swithin. Uh, yeah, it was great. And as for the physical books I read for Mysteries in March, um, I continued on with the Agatha Raisin series. This is Agatha Raisin and the Murderous Marriage. And this might be my favourite in the series so far. I really enjoyed this one. Um, these are just fun, light, little cosy mystery reads. Next up, I read the last of the Nancy Drew mysteries that I own. This is The Mystery at Lilac Inn. And uh, out of the four that I've now read, I think this was my least favourite. I, I don't know, this one was just super over the top. I felt everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And I don't know, I feel like it's always Nancy in the absolute middle of things. It always actually has something to do with her, at least these early ones that I've read. So it's just like, how can any girl be so unlucky? It's not like she's going in and solving other people's mysteries, really. Most of the time she's actually involved and it has something to do with with her and all these crimes being committed around her or, you know, against her and her family. And it's just, I don't know, this one felt a little bit tedious. Still a nice quick read and I'm not completely giving up on the Nancy Drew series because I have only read the first four, which were very early on. Um, so I will try some others out maybe later on in the series. Next up, we have Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. And this is a children's mystery series. It's the first book in the series. Um, on here it says it's a murder most unladylike mystery, but I've also heard this be called the Wells and Wong Mysteries. This is set at a girls boarding school in the 1930s. The story is told in first person by Hazel, who is originally from Hong Kong, but is attending an English boarding school. Uh, she finds a teacher murdered at the beginning of the story and her and her friend Daisy are trying to figure out what happened. I honestly thought I was going to enjoy this more than I ended up. I think the mystery was good. I don't know, something about the writing didn't quite work for me. I can really like first person narratives, but I don't know, something about this didn't quite work for me. Um, I don't know if I'll continue on with the series, but it was still fun. And lastly, definitely my favourite book of No Mysteries in March Challenge. This is Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear, and this is the first book in the Maisie Dobbs Mysteries. I actually did a separate review on this, so I'll have that linked down below if you are interested. But yeah, this was 
really great. I really, really enjoyed it. Now onwards to the other books that I read in March, which is actually a decent amount. I got through quite a lot this month. First up, I'm continuing on my reading of the Blanding's Castle books by Woodhouse, and this one is actually just called Blanding's Castle. Um, this is a collection of short stories, and I know that other publications of this book is actually called Blanding's Castle and Elsewhere, um, which makes sense because it's only the first half of this book that is Blanding's Castle's short stories. And then it continues on with Elsewhere. So these are um, actually set in Hollywood, the other stories and different characters entirely. I love Woodhouse. I especially love the Blandings characters. So this was really great. I also really liked the other short stories in the book. Um, just a really nice, very funny, very relaxing read. Another children's book I have here, this is The Joy of Spooking and this is Fiendish Deeds by PJ Bracegirdle. A non de plume if ever I heard one. And this is a, another first book in a series. And our protagonist is a little girl, Joy Wells, and she actually lives in the town of Spooking. And she goes to school in a nearby town called Darlington. And the people of Darlington tend to look down upon the people of Spooking. Um, but Joy really loves where she lives. She kind of loves anything spooky in general. She really likes scary stories and that kind of thing. This is kind of a little mystery story in itself. I thought it was quite sweet. I'm not positive that I'll continue on with the series, but I might because it was pretty enjoyable. Next up is another book that I've done a separate review on. This is The Seance by John Harwood, and I really enjoyed this. So if you want to hear a little bit more about it, I will have the review linked in the description bar. Next up, I've continued on with the books of Elsewhere. This is The Second Spy, which is the third book in the series. I have a separate review on the first book in this series, The Shadows, which you can check out if you're interested. But I'm enjoying this series. It's a very cute little children's series. Next up we have The Shakespeare Thefts in Search of the First Folios by Eric Rasmussen and this is a non-fiction story and it is just essentially about the first folios, the ones that still exist in the world, the history of them, who's owned them, who currently owns them. Um, I really enjoyed this. I feel like for some people this might feel quite dry and it did actually at the start for me until I got more invested in it, um, but still an enjoyable read nonetheless. I also continued on with my reading of The Moomins by Trove Jansen. This is Comet in Moomin Land, and this was super enjoyable, very, very cute. All about Moomin Troll and Sniff and Snork Maiden, and I loved it. And lastly, the very best book I read this month by far, the book that I'm going to be giving away, is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. Once again, I have a separate review of this, but I loved this. This is a new favourite. It's... I... ah, so good. So I definitely want to give what copy of this away to you guys. So if you're interested in winning a copy of this, all you have to do is like this video, be a subscriber, leave me a comment down below letting me know that you want to be entered and what your favourite read of March was. And of course if you are under 18 you will need the permission of a parent or guardian since you will have to give me your postal address if you win. So good luck with that. And that is it guys, those are the books that I read in March. I had a really great reading month. I hope you guys did too. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you all for watching.